a year, eight months, and three days. Sober time, clean from heroin and opiates, because um, that was my drug of choice, but it's all any mind altering mood changing chemicals. Um, you know, I was kind of a NEO. Uh, anything you put in front of me, I would do. It didn't matter what it was. You know, heroin and pills were my drug of choice, but uh, if you put it in front of me, then I would do it. Cocaine, crack, um, LSD, mushrooms, you know, anything I could get my hands on. There was a point in time where I was even snorting instant coffee. It's, it's like a train, you know, it's like freight trains. Um, and living, you know, living here, there's there's a bunch of trains go by all the time. Um, and so that's that's a constant reminder too. You know, it's it's something that grows inside of you and that is picking up speed and more rail cars behind it and stronger and faster every single day. Um, you know, if you don't keep up with. Um, you know, keeping yourself informed and, you know, keeping sober activities and, you know, social plans and then it, it, that train's going to come it's going to get you every time. I met Bray um, probably, I think it was two Thanksgivings ago. Um, I was here, I was home coordinator here at Focus and we were doing our annual uh, community Thanksgiving. Um, huge event here, we cooked like four or five turkeys, ham, and the whole community came to eat. And he was actually um, at our local rehab called Treeline at the time, and they brought their whole group to volunteer. And he was just kind of one of the group. And then a little bit later, they were helping clean up after the event was done. And he was actually here at Focus in front of a big dry erase board. And he had done this huge design and it said, you know, I think it said gratitude because it was Thanksgiving. And Ben seen it and told me, you know, hey, when you get out, contact me, we'll see about a class. Uh, I think I called him like two or three weeks afterwards. I said, but when you get out of there, I said, you really need to come and volunteer here at Focus. I said, your artwork is amazing. And he told me a little bit more about it and how he kind of did flashboard art, which is tattoo art, tattoo design, um, and graffiti art. And I said, that would be so cool to share how you processed your recovery through designing these amazing designs um, and teach that to somebody else and kind of share your story along with it. A lot more people are open to talk and like really discuss what's going on with them with somebody that honestly can relate. We got Thunder Art on the uh, calendar and got it rolling and yeah, still rolling today. There's been weeks where there's, you know, only one person there or, you know, there's weeks where there's 12, 13 people there. It still helps me with a lot more than, you know, I thought it would in the beginning. Um, but it's, it's, it's real nice. Focus is a great place. Um, you know, it's a safe place too. You don't feel like somebody's standing over you watching you, you know, it's just a safe place to go intertwine with people and learn something and do fun activities and stay sober. When it comes to his recovery, it's just like he puts his cards on the table, you know, and he's willing to share anything about his life to help another person. And that's just, you know, that's amazing. He gives nonstop. He never asks for anything in return. I, you know, I just, I, he's somebody I can depend on if I need anything. He's a great guy. You know, and until everybody just keeps an open mind of, you know, we're the same as everybody else. You know, we're just people that made poor life decisions and need help. You know, we're just not informed on what we need information on. So I think once everybody gets, you know, on the same page or at least, you know, is open to the thought that addicts want to be people too, then stereotypes will change. His resiliency is unbelievable. Um, he can take anything within his life, you know, and he remains a positive person now that he's a sober person. Um, he can take any struggle that he has with school or, you know, maybe a relationship, and he doesn't hide it, doesn't turn it into something negative, doesn't let it take him down. He just brings it to the surface, talks about it, turns it into art, um, shares his story, and it, it just, it's, it's honest, it's, it's cool. But I, th I think, you know, teaching the class and being around the people and knowing that I have that place to go keeps me, what I would think, like, you know, pretty accountable. Sometimes I'm, if 
five, ten minutes late. <laughs> so that's not really that accountable. But other than that, I'm I'm pretty good. And it's it's always food reasons. It's always always food reasons. Like I'll call Ben. I'm grabbing French fries. I'm sorry. I'm gonna be a couple minutes late. Um, you know, or hey, I just got off work. I'm starving. I gotta get food. But <laughs> other than that, um, yeah, fo focus and and you know teaching the class and you know having you know, responsibility too. When I was using, I was, you know, I was responsible for what I was doing at that time, but I didn't have, you know, I wasn't involved in community actions, you know, or trying to help other people. And I did not do anything like that, you know, absolutely. If you would ask me a year, well, I mean, a year ago, I was clean. if you would ask me five years ago, you know, or even three years ago, would you be where I am today? I've, I definitely would have laughed at you. You know, it was, if you would have told me, you know, you're gonna be, you know, working with people and, you know, you're gonna be building stuff for NASA and you, you know, anything that I, any, uh, anything that I do, anything that I do, like I completely changed my whole life. Can't help others till you help yourself and I never understood that until I got clean.